B1 J1 actually originated in this small food company, and the reason why it was um, born through the food company was because the food was my passion, and the same as everybody else, like we all resonate, you know, with different things. And uh, for me, uh, it was food because I believe that the food brought people together. And food wasn't just about you know eating nice food, but then it was sharing those food with people you we really like. So I thought everybody in the world deserved to eat food, but the good food and healthy food as well. So I thought if um, it was becoming difficult to eat more healthier food because everybody's getting busy, then we wanted to have a food company that provided, um, produced and provided healthy eating options, but the very easy, convenient option to busy working people and also people with specific dietary requirement like um, different uh, allergy, you know, food allergy issues and all that kind of thing. So we started up a food company. When I had my own daughter for the first time, Myra, I saw Myra's face in my arm. It was really the happiest moment of my, my life because I couldn't believe that there is this little life which has nothing else but me to protect and care for. But a few days later, suddenly it dawned on me that well, my daughter has, you know, somebody like me who will care for her. I thought, like, so what happens to other kids, you know, children with poor, very poor family? And so I started to think about my life a little bit more. And so then one day this idea about starting our own business came up and I, my daughter Myra was only three months old. So normally at that point you would say, well, that's so crazy to start a business when you have a three month old baby. But I thought it's even though it may be crazy, but it's a perfect time because I feel really connected. Eventually we moved to Australia to set up what we really wanted to do, which was to have a food production company that created the packaged healthy meals and then we were working really really hard so we were working hard to set up the kitchen doing all the construction painting flooring and everything ourselves to try to do it with small budget and then when we were just completing our kitchen unexpected thing happened um, I realized I was pregnant again the second time so Myra was already like three years old and two and a half years old at that time and so you are pregnant again you have a two and a half year old daughter you don't have a lot of money at all and you move to Australia so it's a new country still and you don't know a lot of things about how business works at this point and I thought nearly like changing the plan and not doing it but then we actually pursued and I think the reason why we did was because it wasn't really about like what we wanted to do but we kind of felt committed to our mission. <laughs> we started to operate and we worked hard. We worked like 16 hours a day, every day, seven days a week. And then we started to have a little orders and we started to have a few more orders, but we had a big rent to pay at that time. Every month we had to quite worry about how to just to pay the rent and how to pay for other um, costs for the business. And then as time passed, I also realized that because I was pregnant, my tummy was getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> so we are still working 16 hours a day and my tummy is already very big. And then at one point, like when I was probably like eight months pregnant at that time, um, it hit us that next month we can't pay rent anymore. We had no more money left. And we were kind of starting to sell more, but then because of the big um, overhead, there was no way we could actually just continue doing what we were doing. And so, and another issue, there was another issue at the same time. And another issue was because I was living there as like a um, permanent resident, but just like on a you know, five year permanent residency. So I didn't have normal medical care from the government, which meant that I wasn't going to a hospital because it cost so much money for me to go to a private hospital. So eight months pregnant, I, don't, I didn't know where to have a baby and we didn't have any money to, any money to keep going. And next month we didn't know what would, what would happen. But I felt really like that we had to do something to keep going and giving up wasn't part of our plan. 
So I thought about it, I thought about it, and I loved what we were doing back then. So then one day, the idea came to me, and I thought, oh, this is it. And I said, oh, okay, because we can't pay rent, and then uh, actually it's crazy that we have two places, that we got home rent to pay, and we've got kitchen rent to pay, so why don't we move out of the house and move into the kitchen? And the kitchen is an industrial unit in the, like a factory or kind of zone. And it's just a warehouse. So the kitchen unit is built inside like a shell of an industrial warehouse. And at the top of the kitchen, there is a gap, like an attic, where you, we were just putting like cardboard boxes, stacked up packing boxes in. And I said, well, there's a big space up there, so we could live there. <laughs> so we moved in in the attic and lived among the cardboard boxes, created like a shelter with top, top, blue top, and we had a cozy house there. And so then I thought, wow, that's great. Like now we don't need to pay for rent anymore at home. Suddenly we have more funds to keep going. <laughs> and then um, I also thought, wow, that's great. We don't need to travel anymore between. Like we wake up and it's already work, so we save time as well. <laughs> so, um, but. Then what happened was then at one point I realized that I could be having baby anytime because that by then I'm like nine months pregnant now. So it could happen anytime. And I thought, so what would I do with the baby? <laughs> then one day I said, I have a great idea. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, like I had a home birth back in New Zealand with my first daughter. So I actually know how to have a baby. So I would have a baby here. And then I pointed to the big industrial kitchen sink and said, that's where I'm gonna have a baby. <laughs> so then um, the time came and um, Kai was happily born at 3 a.m. in the morning in this industrial kitchen. About two and a half months, we still lived in that kitchen. And Kai was growing up in a vegetable box <laughs> at that time on the floor. And I moved him everywhere I went. And, and uh, we say now, it, that's why Kai, Kai doesn't like vegetables. <laughs> because he has this trauma of vegetable boxes. <laughs> but actually, he was a happy baby. So we had uh, one Japanese lady who was volunteering and staying with us. And she was really, really amazing because um, she came to stay with us and learn about how to produce healthy food and everything. So she was doing kind of homestay and then doing exchange work. And so when we decided to move to the kitchen, and I felt quite uncomfortable because she was supposed to be with us quite long term, but we suddenly had to change our plan and move to the kitchen. So I said to her, her name is Sayaka, actually we, ha we decided to move into the kitchen because this is the only way we can continue um, Bouncing Olive, the food company. So you, I think it's better that you consider you know, looking for another place to go to. And then at that time, Sayaka looked at me, like quite surprised. But then she said to me, wow, that sounds really fun. I will move with you. <laughs> so Sayaka came with us to, to the kitchen. And then when Kai was born, Sayaka was like one of the people helping me. And uh, yeah, that she said it was life-changing experience. <laughs> sure. And then eventually, because we started to have more orders coming in and we started to have orders coming in from retail stores like supermarket, some of the supermarket outlet um, and health food stores. So we finally could move out of the kitchen and then find a place to live again. And also we started to have more people coming to live with, with us as volunteers. So at one point we had like a 12 volunteers living in our house. Oh. <laughs> when you have a, like a sense of mission, then the, the, you would attract the people who are dedicated. And we weren't actually paying with volunteer, but people were coming. And then so every morning we would all squeeze into the van or some people would run or cycle to the kitchen. And then we would all work like long hours and come home and cook dinner together, eat all together every night and it was just a, such a fun time and kids had a great time having all these lovely people around. Then those time has passed and we started to be more sustainable. We got um, organic certification, we got you know, HACCP certification, like all that kind of things came, came along that we started to become a little bit more professional or a little bit more established and that was like nearly six years, five years after we started um, this food company in Australia. Then one day something really hit me 
um, was that five years on, after all this hard work and never-ending um, uh, you know, effort and everything, we were still in the same place. And the reason why we started this company was because we wanted to give back to support the children who didn't have a food and education. So our intent was always that we will give the profit back to fund orphanages and so that we could share the joy of eating and everything with those who couldn't have that kind of privilege. So that was the intent. And But five years passed and even though our business was bigger and more established, we were still not there because we still have things we had to do and we were still busy and we still had to invest in new equipment or new staff or uh, more pa better packaging or you know doing marketing or whatever so I thought this is really crazy because probably that it would never come because we will 10 years on we will still be busy we will still be doing lots of things and we still wouldn't be able to give back or take time off to do something um, to help others and so that was kind of coming up for me and then at that point around that time we met Paul and then also this business organization um, like a um, membership organization so you belong to this um, group of businesses and the businesses like th they are so-called the social entrepreneurs right so the business people who believed in kind of giving back um, as a ultimate reasons and when I heard about it I got I felt really drawn to it so I joined up and then we started to go to some of the workshops and different conferences and um, meetings and all that kind of things and in one of the those such like uh, um, workshops and it's it's like a quite big conference where 200 people are there and then everybody can submit their own business plan and it becomes like an American idol of business in a business plan competition our business bouncing olive was selected so we were representing this plan and then we will go through all, all sort of mentoring judging sessions and do presentation and develop the idea and talk about it and everything and through that kind of meeting and Paul was participating in that as one of the mentors back then and through those um, sessions in one instance we were talking about this mission of we wanted to give a meal to somebody from every package pack, and the packaged meals we sold and to support people in need and so then somebody in that room said oh that's buy one give one and then when she said it that word kind of stuck almost stuck in the air we could see it just sitting there and total quietness and, and buy one give one and a few seconds later everybody in the room said wow that, what a great idea buy one give one and then um, after that you know we realized that actually so often even though we had something we want to do we will delay it thinking because I have this 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 I have to do I will wait until I'm ready and same in our giving case too that even though our thing was not, you know actually started through the desire to give back but we, we, are, we, we were thinking that we had to become successful in order for us to give up give back so then when would the success come because success is actually not specific concept you know there's no specific end to it so you could say, oh, I'm already successful right now where I am at. Or even if you seem to be doing much better, you could still say, oh, I'm not successful and I still need to do more before I could do what I want to do. So I, we realized that the buy one, give one concept made it possible for anybody to give back um, at where we are at, like rather than trying to be successful first and as a result of success we give back to oh actually we can include that small giving it doesn't matter how small it is but if it's small enough that we could actually afford to do and do it then we we can actually do it today rather than waiting tomorrow and um, that's how B1 Jiran came out then we went back excitedly to our own business but you know like when you get the good idea but then when you go back to the normal kind of like environment you kind of forget and then you get too busy again because you got lots of things to deal with. So 
even though we started to implement the concept of B1G1, buy one, give one in our company, and we thought, we, we thought wow, that's a great idea because all our team members um, can be shared in the, you know, they can share that mission together from now on. Um, and it's not about the company doing good things, but everybody who are contributing can imagine the smiling faces of children who are having happy meal as a result of the meal we are packing or stickers we are putting on or you know the boxes we are stacking and everything so when we, we then we started to talk about those things and feelings and um, but then like eight months later there was another moment um, when I was like chopping something <laughs> and then suddenly I realized Oh my gosh, like what are, what are we doing? Because we have just this such a wonderful concept, but we actually not seeing the real magic of this concept. And, and then I started to imagine, so what if the people who are passionate about education could give back and then educate, you know, help educate the children around the world, or the people who are passionate about the environment could plant more trees as a result of what they are doing. And I thought about all my business friends who you know, have and run different businesses and they were passionate about other things. Not everybody was passionate about food. Then I thought, wow, well, what if, if everybody could join in and give back through everything we, we did, then actually nothing is impossible. We could change any problem. We could transform any problems we have in our world through our everyday act because we have so many people, so many businesses, so many transactions in our world already. We just have to be a little bit more sharing and caring through everything we did.